There's something in the water lurking, and it's becoming a global threat. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Behold, the greatest threat to world peace, Chinese fishermen. That may sound like a joke, but the Chinese Communist Party is using the country's fishermen for some truly sinister purposes. And the U.S. is now sending its Coast Guard to deal with it. But first, did you know YouTube has been secretly unsubscribing people from the show? Make sure you're still subscribed. And hit that like button, because it helps us with YouTube's algorithm. And help us fight censorship with as little as a dollar an episode over on the crowdfunding website Patreon. So you might be wondering, how are Chinese fishermen such a global threat? Well, the Chinese Communist Party is great at weaponizing any part of Chinese society. One Chinese fisherman doesn't seem like much of a threat. But when you have a fleet of thousands invading disputed waters, then you're talking about something different. In just the first six months of 2020, more than 2,500 Chinese fishing boats were expelled from Japanese territorial waters. And it's not just Japan. It's happened in the Philippines and with Pacific Island nations like Fiji, Kiribati, and Palau. In fact, according to this report by the British Overseas Development Institute, China's deep water fishing fleet is five to eight times larger than previous estimates. It's made up of about 12,000 ships that fish in other countries' waters. And according to this foreign policy article, China's fishing fleet is the only one in the world that has a geopolitical mission, taking over weaker countries' waters and expanding Beijing's maritime territorial ambitions. It's not just about asserting China's rather broad territorial claims of the entire South China Sea. These Chinese fishing fleets plunder the waters to feed China's massive population, while leaving very little for anyone else. And this has a huge environmental impact as well. That's one of the reasons countries around the world were so concerned when the Chinese fishing fleets spent a month surrounding the Galapagos Islands. In fact, China's fishing fleet is regularly implicated in overfishing targeting of endangered shark species, illegal intrusion of jurisdiction, false licensing and catch documentation, and forced labor. Why aren't other countries doing something about it? Well, because they risk the wrath of the Chinese military. These fishing fleets are actually part of the Chinese Communist Party's military force at sea. It's what's called the People's Armed Forces Maritime Militia. These maritime militia ships are typically civilian ships, often with crews of fishermen. But like any civilian-owned company in China, these fishing crews have to answer to the Chinese Communist Party when called upon. I did a full episode about these guys called China's Hidden Navy, the Maritime Militia. When called upon, the maritime militia can make aggressive moves, like surrounding disputed waters, or bumping or ramming other ships. And sometimes, these fishing vessels are also shadowed by China's Coast Guard. So when hundreds of civilian fishing boats enter your country's territorial waters, are you going to risk a confrontation with the Chinese military? Recently, China passed the Coast Guard law. According to the Lawfare blog, the law allows the Chinese Coast Guard to use all necessary measures, including weapons, when China's national sovereignty, sovereign rights, and jurisdiction are being illegally infringed by foreign organizations and individuals at sea. The U.S. State Department criticized it, saying language in the law, including text allowing the Coast Guard to destroy other countries' economic structures and to use force in defending China's maritime claims in disputed areas strongly implies this law could be used to intimidate the PRC's maritime neighbors. And so the U.S. is doing something about it. And that means the U.S. Coast Guard 
is being deployed very far from home. More after the break. Welcome back. Unless you didn't see an ad because YouTube demonetized us. That's why we need your support on Patreon. So, in early December, a U.S. Coast Guard vessel was sailing in the waters of Palau. That's about 6,600 miles from the U.S. coast. Okay, that's really stretching the definition of Coast Guard. But the U.S. sent its Coast Guard there for a reason. To bust Chinese ships for illegal fishing. It's part of a coordinated U.S. effort to counter China's fishing fleets. In 2019, a U.S. Coast Guard ship even conducted a freedom of navigation operation in the Taiwan Strait. This began with the 2018 Trump administration's national defense strategy. According to a senior policy analyst at the RAND Corporation, the biggest transition has been the Coast Guard's more overt signaling about its role in the great power competition with China. The U.S. Coast Guard is technically under the Department of Homeland Security, but it's been working with the Pentagon more and more. U.S. government data shows Coast Guard vessels spent 326 days in support of the Department of Defense in 2019, compared with an average of just 50 to 100 days over the previous five years. All of the 2019 deployments were in the Indo-Pacific. Part of the Coast Guard's work in the Indo-Pacific is fairly mundane. Working with other countries, repairing ships, training crews, and replacing navigational buoys. But it's clear the ultimate aim is to counter China. The Coast Guard is investing more than $19 billion in at least eight national security cutters, 25 offshore patrol cutters, and 58 fast response cutters. These ships are able to travel farther and faster in worse conditions. They are armed with a naval gun system and heavy machine guns, and have decks on which helicopters can land. That sounds like they might be used for a little more than search and rescue. And now it's time to answer a question from a fan who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Jacob Anthony asks, Hey Chris, can you do a segment over the current state of Falun Gong? I haven't heard anything about it in a while. Good question. In general, they are still persecuted, still having their organs harvested. Although if you saw a recent podcast with David Mattis, who helped expose forced organ harvesting in China, that might be changing. Not because the Chinese regime is slowing down, but because they might have just killed all the eligible Falun Gong organ donors. That's a big reason why Uyghurs are the new Falun Gong at least in terms of organ harvesting. But here's an interesting update. This is Peng Bo. He was the deputy director of the 610 office. That's the Gestapo-like secret police that spearheaded the persecution of Falun Gong. Well, he's the latest target of Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign. For those of you who don't know, Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign is really targeted at his political rivals, mostly tied to former Chinese leader Jiang Zemin. Jiang was the one who launched the genocide of Falun Gong. And Xi Jinping really seems to have it in for the 610 office. Six former directors have been sacked. Zhou Yang Kang, the highest ranking of them, was sentenced to life in prison. Does that make up for the fact the Falun Gong organ bank has been depleted? Not really. In fact, this isn't exactly justice. Peng Bo should be arrested for crimes against humanity, but the CCP won't ever admit to any of their crimes, so it's always some charge of corruption or something unrelated to the actual crimes committed. But there's your update, Jacob. And thanks for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.